Hey guys, welcome to episode three of the Graveyard House Renovation. I bought this house in March, if you're just joining. It comes with three acres on the side of the road with the house and about 10 acres on the opposite side of the road, which includes the barn and the graveyard. In this episode, we dig deep into the foundation and I realized that the skeleton of this extension needs to be replaced. And we do a, a pretty deep dig in to see all the problems that are in this section of the house. Okay, some major project has started here. You see where I did the repair in the last video? This whole back wall needs a foundation. And so with the guys and the crew, got this steel I-beam holding the house up while there is no foundation with a little assist from this pole and that little screw jack. And what else? So we just have this. Inside I have a screw jack, bottle jack holding that up. And that gives us the opportunity to freely work and build in the stairwell here and this whole foundation wall. That's the original foundation wall, which I believe, I think the original house was on the square foundation, moved over halfway, and then they built the additional house, which is about 30 years later. So it's half on the foundation, but it's bigger. So that's why it sticks out about two feet, three feet around every side of the three sides, this side, that side, and that side. You could see that wall right there is how far it sticks out from the foundation. Now this monstrosity, we decided to pull all of the cement that was down underneath there. There was all this cement covering up the rock foundation, which wasn't really a foundation at all. Everything's crooked right here. On this side, there's like three layers of sill plates, which means somebody tried to repair it. There's even a repair, which looks like it was done in the last couple of years. There's no saving any of this for any reason. The only thing I could do is recycle all these beams. I'll take all this down, but I will save everything. First thing I gotta do is strip all the walls out, but there is no saving pretty much anything here. I do wanna save the roof. So I'm gonna save the roof inside. I'm gonna put the whole entire roof on stilts rip out all the walls and rebuild the entire section from the bottom all the way across. You can see all this has got to go. There's no saving this at all. All scabbed together for no good reason. Nothing is straight. Nothing is in good shape at all. From the original house, which is right here, back, I'm taking all the walls down. Before the realization that those walls need to come down, Kurt and Hunter came over with their mini backhoe to start working on the foundation. That's Ken and his assistant, Donnie. Ken did all the stonework around my house, which I haven't shown in quite a bit, but Ken is an amazing stone, stone man. He lays stone. You might call him a stone mason, but he does dry stack mostly with a little bit of mortar. And we looked at this foundation, and we don't know what's going on right there that you could see on the left side of the stairwell, so we're going to leave it for now. But what we do know is we absolutely need... A new set of stairs to go into the basement and this whole foundation wall under my last repair. In fact, that foundation wall, in time you'll realize, needs to go under right where Ken is standing, obviously, but also around the whole extension. I'm calling the house in three parts, the original house, the new house, and the extension. And in this video, we focus on the foundation, the beginning of this foundation that you see right here. It's interesting with the mini hoe, he's a pull up old stones that were the stones that were the steps. But with the ground settling and weather and grass creep, all these stones were buried. But you notice how good Hunter is at pulling them out and how gentle he is at pulling them out without breaking them. Because all these big giant stones will get used again somehow, some way. And when we dug all this up, there's so many stones that were probably part of the original foundation that just became part of the earth. This is me in the basement when the excavator is pulling up a lot of dirt. We had to get in there a lot. We wanted to move the earth away as far as possible so that we can get a good foundation wall in there. And there's tons of gravel will go in there, as you see. Now here you see the amount of work that we're just digging in. And Ken is there supervising for the dry stack. And we had a conversation. I said, Ken, how do you plan on holding the house up? And we went back and forth with a few ideas. We were gonna put a couple of bottle jacks, but 
the bottle jacks would have needed to be right where the foundation was going to be. And if we had to dig deeper and deeper and deeper, it would have been too precarious. About three months ago, my buddy T offered to sell me a steel I-beam. In fact, he sold me two. One of them is a little shorter than the other, but one is 20 feet, one is 10 feet. And I said, what if we go get a steel I-beam? That's all of us discussing the idea. And so we go over to across the street near the barn, which is where I had T drop off the steel I-beam. It's an 8-inch steel I-beam. And we bring it back over across the street, and we use that to support the house. In the second half of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the extension. So it's the stone wall and the extension. But right here, you see how gentle Hunter's being with the teeth on this bucket because we know the drain to the house is right here. The main drain comes through the foundation wall right about here and we're just slowly scratching the ground hoping not to break it but definitely we know we're going to find it. We know it's right there and so that's why Hunter's being so gentle with the tip of those teeth just pulling away the earth. And as we dig in we find an interesting discovery and you'll see it in the coupling. The coupling that is in the four inch drain pipe that comes out of the house is right kind of right now where the thumb is which is very close to the house and Hunter has a lot of experience digging up old foundations and also septic tanks and he said oh the septic tank was right there the original septic tank and we dug deep and we ultimately found a lot of this dark dirt which would have been what was in the septic tank this dark dark really dark dirt with a metal box around it and then this is here what you see we dug up the metal box and I don't, couldn't tell what shape, it was just Swiss cheese. But this metal box was the original septic tank. The new septic tank was moved over about 10 feet. We were able to find it, especially when one of the trucks popped through the cap. Now this is the stone that I don't get too much footage of, me breaking away all this cement. If you go back and look at some of the original images of the house in video one and two, all this foundation stone stack whatever there really wasn't much stone left underneath it but somebody in the 70s or the 60s poured all this concrete around the foundation which really just holds the moisture in it really doesn't do anything else except hold the moisture in and accelerate the rot now this is that steel i-beam that i got i bought two of these one is 10 feet usable it got cut up a little bit and the other one is a full 20 feet 500 bucks delivered now that was a deal that's somebody who had to get out of a property or get out of a rental. It was a friend of T, so I don't know exactly who gave them to me, but T picked them up for me. So he, he brokered the deal. But that is a 20-foot, 8-inch I-beam. It's about a half-inch thick steel. It's 8 inches in the eye, and it's 8 inches wide. And it came in totally handy. I had no idea where I might use it in the house. I never thought that I'd be able to grab it or pick it up by myself, but with the mini hoe, and the, the hoe's got a thumb on it, which is making me think I should put a thumb, do a video of me putting a thumb on my case backhoe, which is something I've been exploring. There you see the drain pipe to the house. And we, we're hanging that on a chain. We're bringing it in a little bit at a time. Let's listen in. I think uh, he's got to scroll down a little bit to get it kicked up. So he's got to go down on the chain. Down. Down on the chain. Yeah, about three inches. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Okay, I think that's good. And this is about 15 minutes into the future from the last clip, and you see the guys got the bottle jacks under on the outside and I put a bottle jack on top of a 6x6 six six on the inside. The I-beam lays directly across the splice that I made in the last video. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to split. If I put it on either side of the splice I wouldn't trust it. Not without more support. So you could see right there how that I-beam goes right through the splice. And Donnie's just pulling out more and more and more junk and here you see me just double checking everything, listening for creaks and cracks and Ultimately, everything was pretty good. Tremendous help from those other bottle jacks that are also in the house that are on either sill plate, the sill plate for the old house and the sill plate for the new house. So that's really providing a lot of support as well as, of course, the I-beam. Now, the I-beam will give us the opportunity to be able to work completely and freely around that whole space without having to worry about 
a leg collapsing or if we were to see the stanchion there in the stairwell is safe because it's not there's not going to be any under digging around it it won't get underpinned here if i had one bottle jack or two bottle jacks i'd have to worry about where it touched the earth the whole time now these guys can work freely and not worry and we the dig the deeper we dig we're finding these more foundation stones that are just engulfed into the earth it didn't seem like there was anything there when we first started digging but as we went a little bit deeper into the dirt we started finding finding more and more bigger stones which we're going to save and reuse now Kurt and Hunter took away a lot of the dirt that we didn't need and we just pay it forward when they have a job at that moment we need backfill they'll just bring it over the truck is always loaded with dirt some of the stuff could have went back to my other house which is a few miles away but what's interesting, I didn't expect to have a hole nearly this big. But now that I see it, it makes perfect sense. We could work cleanly around it. We're also going to need to create a drain, which is why a lot of gravel goes in there. That will start to create a, a spot for the water to go. So you go down, obviously we're going to be below the frost line, at least with a lot of this stuff. But rain and frost and rain will drain away all this gravel is going to create a bed and then we're going to do a French drain tube into that. That's going to come in an upcoming video. We didn't do it yet. And that French drain is going to go about 100 feet away from the house. So when all the rain and the runoff comes from this roof and collects right here, it's going to drain away. After some heavy rains, we notice there's not too much rain collecting in the bottom of the stairwell. So we decided not to put a drain there because the drain that goes in the bottom of the stairwell where Donnie's standing would have needed to go out like 400 feet, which wasn't, it wasn't economically necessary. And I'm just going to do doors. So when we do the stairwell, the top of the stairwell will have doors on it to keep any rain from collecting in there. At, right now, naturally, no rain collects in there. It always tends to collect right where we need the drain, which is why the inside foundation wall is heaved out. After all is said and done, the new foundation on the exterior of the house is going to be all that's needed. The top of this foundation wall you could see here in slow motion that's all open. We won't need any of that. So that'll probably just stay open like a crawl space. All the weight is going to be now on the outside of the house where it should have been to begin with. More and more blue stones going in there. That's just, uh, I think it's number four. I don't know. Somebody will yell at me in the comments and correct me. But a nice big deep bed of that is going at the bottom of the stairwell and also, of course, under the foundation wall. We made a decision here. We're going to eliminate that jog in the building. So the back of the house is just going to go directly into the extension. But I won't be able to do that until I rip the extension walls apart, sill plate, and floor. I could see how I can incorporate that. And then I'll maybe make a closet inside the house or just make some rooms a little bit bigger. It makes no sense for to jog the foundation wall around that corner. In time, what I'm saying will make sense. Now we are on the other side. This is the next day. We're on the other side. This was a foundation that was under a chimney. You see that hole in the wall? There was a chimney there. And Hunter picked that up and pulled it right out of the ground. There was never a chimney there as far as I could see, not in recent memory. And now we're just pulling over these big poured pieces of concrete. These have to be 30, 40, 50 years old maybe. And all they did was prove to rot the wood that was inside there. In just a minute you'll see how horrible everything was. So Hunter just picks up all this debris, just puts it in his truck. They use it for fill. Hunter's building a house so he's going to take all this fill to level off his property and this is just tons of cement which was just completely unnecessary whoever did this 50 years ago was really wasting their time it, it, it's not actually carrying anything all it did was protect the exterior of the crawl space and it didn't do a good job at that because all it does is hold the moisture in you don't get any airflow you get nothing it's a really horrible technique and completely unnecessary water goes down between it creates all types of frost heave and 
obviously rot. And here I'm just pulling up the clapboard looking how bad everything is. And it's, it's really bad. I'm impressed that Hunter is so delicate with that machine. He really can move something super delicately and slow and pick it up gently. And this is where I'm seeing where we're pulling the stone away. The foundation dirt, the foundation wood is just falling right to the dirt. In some cases, you'll see where there's some severe bug damage. Here it is. That just keeps going and going and going and going. That's just all post beetles or something. And it's only in that one section. The rest of it just seems to be rotted. But that post beetle digging, that powder, is just right in that little three-foot section. Doesn't matter. It's all going away. And right here is where we get to the corner of the building. It's the, the most far away corner from the original house, the old house. And we're all a little nervous because even though I have some support underneath various spots, we don't know what's going to happen. So we gently pull it out and right there we're all yelling at each other, we're good. So look at this giant piece of stone stack all held together with concrete that was poured into it. And it is just nonsense. Pure nonsense, like a big payday bar of stone. Now this is the extreme back of the house. This is from the other side, it's a garage. It was, I was told by one of the neighbors, the old timers that said, when the people lived in this house, the people that lived there the longest, a couple owners ago, they would keep the new section completely closed off because it was hard to heat. They would only work inside of this area and just inside there and then that front room. And they would heat it with wood that was stacked inside this room. So this was always full of wood for the most of the life. And even though this is all getting torn down, I was a little nervous about it being so bulgy. So I asked the hunter to just gently shove it in just so we don't have any catastrophic failure. So this was all, you see how there's nothing under it? There was nothing under it once we pulled the concrete away. There was just a couple of stones here and there, but those stones weren't even touching the sill plate. So ultimately what we do is we just shove it in with the nose of the backhoe and listening for anything catastrophic. <laughs> you see Ken just gives me the shoulders like, cool. So this room was a lame attempt at trying to make an apartment in this house. This would have been the back door. That would have been closed off. This was the kitchen area, which the previous owner closed off. But two owners ago, they tried to make this into an apartment. And it had sheetrock in it, but the previous owner that I purchased it from stripped it. But after looking at how bad the exterior is, this is getting gutted. You know, here I am going to town just pulling out all these 2 by 4s I use a sawzall with a starrett metal cutting blade on it and I just cut through all the nails and now that that dates it the whole entire thing was put together with a hammer and nails so that tells me it was probably done in the 80s or maybe even the 90s because most construction now done in the last 20 years is either put together with a nail gun or screws. All right, This room is pretty well gutted I'm going to leave on those tie rods just to keep the ceiling secure while I hold it up in the air but next is to get rid of all these walls obviously the chimney's going to stay one step closer everything I do is movement towards the goal to get this place back in order now I can have some fun a lot of this construction you'll see has got some new patches and it. It, none of it makes any sense as far as structural or zoning goes, it's all just horribly done. It was really just band-aids on something that was a bloody festering wound. It was never going to help anything. It was really just a lame attempt. And getting rid of all this, poking it at it from the inside, it pops right off there. I'm just using a 2 by 4 from where I'm standing, popping it all off. None of it is worth saving. It's, it's pretty well unnecessary to save it. It just makes good firewood. And now I'm up 
on the ladder and you see I'm using a Halligan tool, which is uh, what the firemen use. And they are amazing. It's the amazing, it's an amazing construction tool to take things apart. You see how you can pivot right off of a two by four at any given spot. You could hook and it's heavy enough to just break right through some of that siding. And on this side, I realized the rafter tails are fake. So I have to break them all out. They have about 50 screws. Each rafter tail has about 10 screws in it. Now you see me whacking out the phony rafter tails. And obviously what's most important while I'm up here is safety. I don't want to fall. It's really important that I don't fall. So I'm holding on when I'm up at the top of the ladder, swinging that hammer really hard. I'm also making sure that I have grip on something so that when I'm throwing that hammer, I'm not throwing my balance out. I'm carrying the wall with my left hand. And man, those things don't come out easily. All right, we can see what's actually happening in here. This is bug damage. 200 years of bug damage. I mean, some beautiful, some beautiful imagery in there. Look at that. Looks like something from Sid Mead if you're looking really close. But it's going in the garbage. And I just wanted to show you, this is the vision. Fire going, beautiful views. Be a window from here to here or an open door. I have no idea what's happening here. You know how to use that, don't you? Yeah, I was using it a couple hours ago. <laughs> these, boys, these boys are good. These are good. Now, Mike is a New York City fireman. He helps me out on all the stuff where I need muscle. And Mike's got a lot of experience doing demo work and also doing build back work. So it's good to have Mike around, especially when it's getting a little bit more precarious. This is the type of thing I don't want to do alone, especially when it gets a little bit more risky. But here I'm trying to save a lot of this stuff. Some of it's split, some of it's unnecessary. But there's some really good wood here. And now here we're going to town, just popping out that unnecessary siding. And most of this seems original, original to, I don't know, when did they start sheeting houses and then putting siding on. When did that happen? Because this is before that. This is where you build a 2x4 wall or a 4x4 wall, 24 inches on center, or at least maybe even wider, and then you just put clapboard on it. This definitely predates sheeting. I've seen other houses though without sheeting that predate sheeting and they would use big planks. So you do kind of like an underlayment, like a, like a, uh, and the, the underlayment on a floor, and then you put the finished floor on it. Back in the day, you would have put on one by sixes, or one by eights, at a diagonal in some cases, and then put the siding on. But anyway, this house doesn't do any of that. <laughs> and there, I'm just getting rid of some of that texture 111 that probably the guy I bought the house from put on. It wasn't doing much, and it was all crooked. Now, I'm just trying to show you, look at that beautiful view I'm going to be able to take advantage of now. And I'm just working on the inside with the end of a 2x4, actually 2x6, just poking it all through, getting rid of it all. And Mike's working on figuring out how to get that window jam out without breaking the glass, which we broke one pane, we were able to save the second one. Just We just don't want glass around, I don't want the, the window, I'm going to throw the whole thing away. And here I am in the loft, breaking out that... Whoa. Siding. I'm really nervous. This is the loft. Oh, it's very bouncy. Down. It's coming down, but in the meantime, oh. look at all the debris on it. Ooh, look Get what I find. Load. What you got? Get mummified cat. Holy shit. No way. Perfect specimen.
You don't mind grabbing this gently? <laughs> Deal with dead animals all the time. If you go put him on the table in the front of the room. Thank you. Wow. His paw is gently on there. And here you see I threw all the debris out of the loft and I'm just sweeping off all the raccoon poop. This is going to go. I'm going to try and save and preserve as many of these planks as I can. And here Ken is working on his first step. He's going to be there until the kingdom come. All dry stack and like I said he uses mortar where necessary. Now that dry stack is going to be the foundation for the very first big slab step. And then he builds up and then another slab step and so on. And this is me just taking back, looking at the house and contemplating where I'm at. Each one of these big steps don't happen quickly. I have to think them through. And now it's a couple days later and I'm starting to stilt up the sides. And I'm slowly trying to see how that slow slight angle is going to bevel up and move up the house. And I'm actually picking the house up slightly. And that's why I'm just checking as I go. And now the wall's loose. It's hard to see it, but I didn't want to go too far too fast. So thank you for watching. Next episode, I'm hoping to have this whole thing gutted out. All the structure gone, all the flooring gone, and all suspended on stilts like this. I got stilts like this. I've already put in three so far today by the next chapter. This whole thing will be up in the air. All that will be gone. New sill plate, 30 feet by 17 feet. And I'm going to repair this sill plate here in preparation for the new foundation. That's it. Just solving every little problem as it comes up. And I said it in the last video, the biggest problem with doing an old house like this is just taking the gut punch and moving forward. Thanks for watching. Just as a little aside, I don't understand what's going on here. There might be some supernatural activity or the previous owner's kid left footprints that now showed up. How could footprints and handprints show up months after I bought the house? I go into more of a deep dive on my Instagram with all this stuff. So there's handprints that come and go. And in this week, the stain showed up and these footprints showed up. I don't know. Check the Instagram for more information on that stuff.